In the last video, I showed you how I upgraded my T962 reflow oven to fix some of the issues that were present on the factory unit. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it on screen right now so you can watch it. I also mentioned that uh, there is the possibility to enter a custom reflow profile into the uh, firmware of the T962 and that's a feature that you're likely going to have to use not only because there are so many solder paste options and you'll have to have the uh, right profile for the solder paste you're using but there is also variation between different ovens so it's likely that you're going to have to tweak the reflow profile that you're using so that it works best for your oven so in this video I'm going to show you how to define a custom reflow profile in the open source unified engineering firmware. But before we get started I highly recommend you check out the sponsor of this video PCBWay.com. They offer high quality professional PCBs manufactured at affordable pricing with fast turnaround times. They also offer complete turnkey solutions where they handle everything from sourcing the parts to assembling and testing your boards before shipping so you can get them fully assembled. Check out their website linked below. Before doing any actual configuration on the oven, you need to start with the specs of your solder paste. For this example, let's assume we are working with the NP545 series from Kester. We need a datasheet of this product to check out the recommended reflow profile. Inside the datasheet, we should find the recommended temperature graph. For this example, uh, we observed that the graph is unusually small, uh, but luckily this uh, PDF can be zoomed in and we can increase the size of this graph without losing its quality. At this point, I recommend you grab a screenshot of this uh, profile and import it into your favorite image editing tool because we need to draw some lines on this graph to extract some values. First, I added a scale on the y-axis uh, with a line at each five points. Then I added these lines to plot the absolute values on the y-axis. So we now have a set of temperature values for every 30 seconds of the profile. But the firmware on the oven and its procedure for inputting a custom reflow profile expects data points every 10 seconds. So we need to somehow extrapolate our values to generate more points in between. To facilitate that process, I have found some previous work done by someone named George Hilliard who put together this Excel sheet to handle the extrapolation. So I designed a Google Sheets document based on his work to do this extrapolation. I will link this in the description below so you can check it out and generate your own data for the profiles you want to use. All you have to do in this document is to input the values you got from the graph in the red columns and it will automatically calculate extrapolated data in the blue columns. Now we are ready to input the extrapolated values in the oven. Start by pressing F4 to go into the profile selection and we're going to scroll until we see custom number one. There is also custom number two, so in total you can input two custom profiles, but today we're going to use only one profile and we're going to configure that on the uh, custom number one slot. And as you can see, I'm inputting the values one by one. And once you're done, you can click S and uh, your newly created profile is ready to be used. For my first try, I only put in values up to the 272nd mark, which I had on my graph. But then I noticed this unwanted behavior where the oven would turn the heating back on when it ran out of points at the 272nd mark. Uh, you could have stopped the uh, oven manually at that point, but I would really consider this a firmer bug. It should really do nothing when it finished the uh, specified profile points. But until I get a chance to look at the code and maybe implement a fix for this, I would recommend you specify temperature points in 10 degrees steps down to the last slot at 470 seconds. You can use like a 20 degrees value for the last few steps. This will ensure the oven will nicely cool down till the end of the profile and there is no risk for uh, the oven to accidentally turn back on. At this point, it might be a good idea to do some test runs, measure and compare the internally reported temperatures with a second external measuring de device and maybe do some calibration because you shouldn't expect the oven to precisely follow the profile you've just entered. Surely there will be variations from that and you might need to tweak it further until you are happy with the results. 
If you'd like to see me do a video on how to calibrate the oven, please let me know in the comments. As usual, I would appreciate your feedback and let me know in the comments if you own the T962, if you've done these uh, upgrades, if you're using custom reflow profiles and how it's been working out for you. I'm particularly interested to know if the ovens you have are following the uh, profile you are uh, configuring. So if you found this video useful, you can support the channel through Patreon or not. I would still be happy if you would hit the like button. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.